Hello. Okay. Looks like this thing is working. Do, 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 do. Now we have to figure out if anybody's here. Is anybody here? Wouldn't surprise me if nobody's on yet. That's okay. Just going to go over some airbrushing stuff. I've been doing a bunch of different airbrushes lately. Uh, trying a bunch of different ones. My desk is just an absolute nightmare right now. I apologize for that. So we'll have to work around that. Figure out everything here. Uh, this can go here. I'm making space here. Okay. Um, yeah, so been trying a bunch of different airbrushes lately. Um, and was going to give some feedback on all of them and, and some general kind of, you know, if you're looking to get an airbrush, which might be looking for. And then, um, yeah, just kind of, uh, yeah. So we'll start off, um, we're going to start off with probably the most popular airbrush. Um, this is a uh, Badger Patriot. Um, this is the Aero Extreme Edition, so it's a little different, but it's fundamentally the same brush. Um, Aero just means, oh, let me get my camera. There we go. Um, and the arrow part of it just means that the cup is smaller. It's more hobby sized friendly usage. Um, you know, it's if you're going to paint a mural on a wall, I wouldn't use this brush. It just, you know, doesn't hold that much paint unless you're doing relatively small things. Um, and the extreme just means it has a few features, none of which are honestly really that critical. Um, this little valve down here, which I recommend you basically not use on the the these models. It's just not a, a well executed feature. Um, the the extreme does come with the tall trigger, which I really do like. Um, it's a very helpful trigger. You can see this this brush is well loved. It um. You know, it's got some paint in the cup. If you ever just really, really don't want paint in your cup and you're just, you know, it's a little bit is dried in there and it just really bothers you, all you really have to do is take some acetone. Nail polish remover, basically. And a Q-tip. And it should come right out. So we do that. Yeah, so see, look at that. If you want to get your cup all nice and clean, you know, you can. A lot of people just, as they use it, that stuff starts to become less important. As long as it's clean enough, you know. It's not bad every once in a while to to give it a good clean. Um, I like acetone for cleaning that kind of stuff just because it does it like instantly. Um, it's good to keep on hand, you know, so this is the, the Patriot. If you're starting out and you're looking to, to airbrush, this is an excellent, excellent choice because it's budget friendly. You know, they're, they're easily picked up in the, um, $75 range. A lot of times, um, if you catch one on sale, a lot of times they're even cheaper than that. They can be in the 60 to the $65 range and the nice thing is they're just as far as an airbrush goes they're probably one of the simplest versions of an airbrush um they they there's not a lot of seals to go wrong there's not a lot of of special this and special that to go wrong um it's just it's a relatively simple airbrush you can take the back off here here's the needle this is the part that, that kind of holds the needle and then also presses against the spring in here, right? So there's a spring that provides the, the pullback pressure here. Um, the way airbrushes work in general, if you, you, you really should know at least a little bit. If you're planning on doing some airbrushing, you should, should have a basic foundation, is that um, the needle comes through here and then it goes out the end and it goes through a nozzle right there, right? That's a nozzle. And then what happens is the air comes up through here and there's a chamber in the bottom of the airbrush that you can't see. There's a chamber that runs up here 
sideways along here and then it mixes it comes in right where that nozzle is basically um right right on the other the other side of the nozzle and so what happens is um when you press the trigger I think if I can do this without making a big mess um I don't think I can let me see if I can get it off on another one here Mm, nope. Yeah. I think I can get it off on this one. I don't really want to, but eh, too hard on it. When you press the trigger, there is a little valve that presses down. I'm trying to see if any of mine can come off easily. So I can show you said valve. Do, 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 do. All of mine are on there really good, and they should be on there really good. There we go. All right. When you press the trigger, what happens is it presses this valve. And see how there's a little hole right there, right? So when you press the valve, it's going to allow the air to come out of that hole, and that hole will line up on the inside with another hole, that's a hole on the side there, that will allow the brush, the air then travels through that hole in the body of the brush, mixes with the paint up here, and kind of pulls the paint out, right? With the with the air and mixes in the no mixes the the nozzle and um yeah. So that's kind of how it works. So what happens is when you put paint right here you you only want it to stay this portion forward there's um a, what's called a needle bearing or a needle seal in this area which is very tightly fitting around the needle and it won't let paint go back this way okay you don't want paint in any of this area so when you slide that needle in um, it effectively blocks the paint and keeps it going only this direction okay um so you want to make sure whenever you're using your airbrush that you do not have paint in this area when you pull the needle out. If you pull the needle all the way out and it goes past that that seal, what's going to happen is paint's going to start to run back in here and it's going to mix with all your air functionality and that's going to cause real issues. So you don't want that. Okay, so um, the, the, the big reason that I kind of recommend this brush um, to new people is it's affordable, the, the parts are cheap, um, it's a solid brush like I swear this thing would practically spray gravel and and it's just it's a very difficult brush to kind of mess up on um, So let's put some stuff through it and just and just show you um, I have kind of an odd setup um, on the end here. This is um, The larger size this is uh, like the medium size nozzle with a super fine detail um, needle going through. So the needle's gonna stick out a little farther. What that means is that um, it'll have a fairly tight cone because of the needle, but it'll let larger particles like white and, and stuff through um, without any issue. So we're gonna throw some of the stuff down on paper and then we're gonna use some of them on a model and we'll see. So, you know, if we're spray painting here, I am a little high on my... I'm doing inks right now because they require the least amount of cleaning for me when I'm teaching here. So you can see, we can get a real, or we can come in here. We can do real fine stuff. Don't let anybody ever tell you that the SOTAR, or that the... that the Patriot can't do fine lines. I mean, that's effectively a pencil line. Right? So you can get... It just takes a lot of practice and trigger control and having the right amount of air and the right amount of, of paint and, and just really a lot of practice to do that. It's a lot easier to do shades and things like that, right? So, 
right? That's a lot easier. But if you... A lot of times on a model, what you're really doing... When, when you get to a certain point, is you're really doing little bursts. And so what you want is set, you know... Set up a grid... You know, give yourself a grid and then practice just putting little tiny dots. Right where you want them. And that's going to give you more trigger control. Okay. Because a lot of times that's what you want. It's not that common where you're like holding the trigger down. And you're like, la dee da dee da It's not a spray can, right? So most of the time you're like, I want a little bit here. I want a little bit there. I want a little bit right there. Maybe you might kind of do a... Like that. But the problem is, you know, we're painting on a hard surface. So if you hover in one area too long, it's just, it's going to pull up and it's going to spider real bad. And you're not going to enjoy it. So the, the key here is that you pretty much always want to be moving. Like, don't stay in the same spot. Don't try to put down a heavy, you know, don't like, don't do that. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. So the nice thing about this brush is that it's super dependable. Okay. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of bad things to say about it. Um, the... I would say that the the brush maybe isn't as res or the trigger isn't as responsive as some of the other ones. Um, you know, it doesn't have certain features like a, like a needle stop. Um, the nice thing is it is. I'll show you the the just a second. I'm cleaning the airbrush out here. Um, this is how I clean my airbrushes. I'm gonna do this. We're gonna spray some water then. Um, the nozzle on it does not need tools to be removed, which is super nice. We've got it pretty much clean just with, um, what happened to my airbrush cleaner? Where the heck did my airbrush cleaner go, guys? Somebody stole my airbrush cleaner. I don't think anybody's on. So it's not a big deal, except I'm about to do a whole bunch of airbrush stuff. It would be nice to have some airbrush cleaner. Wonk, wonk, wonk. Wheel? Huh. There it is. Got put way over here. So we're gonna put just a little bit and then I'm just gonna spray it out. It's running clear. That's good enough for me right now. Like that's the extent of what I would do is Rinse it out with water, flush it till it's good, run a little cleaner through it, and that's good for 90% for of the time. Um, yeah, so the, the Patriot definitely can do smaller lines, stuff like that. It just takes more practice. Um, you can see we got some nice thin lines there, right? So after you've upgraded, after you've gotten a Patriot, a lot of people have trouble with getting those fine lines, especially on models and stuff. And so they think, well, I need a, I need a detail brush, right? Well, you know, once you've kind of exhausted your learning, maybe like once you've mastered your, um, your bigger brush, you know, it's not a bad idea to pick one up, but I will say a lot of people jump to something like a two millimeter or a 1.5 millimeter. I'm just cleaning off this tip right now. I, I, I noticed this was kind of dirty. So I'm just, I got some acetone here and I'm just cleaning this off real quick. Um, a lot of people jump to a detail brush, honestly, way too soon. Um, because they have trouble mastering the, um, motion of it largely due to lack of practice. So rather than put in more practice, they think I need to buy a detail brush when what they really needed to do was spend a lot more time learning how to airbrush. 
the Sotar is, is all together is, is a little nicer brush. This is the Sotar Slim. All that really means is that it doesn't have um, a reservoir here. It's just got this little bump, right? So you're only going to be putting a few drops of paint. And when you're doing detail stuff, a lot of times, that's all you want anyways, is just a few drops of paint. So you're really not missing out on anything, so to speak. Okay. So not something to worry about on that. If you have mastered your, your more general purpose airbrush, your your patriot you can do those pencil lines like i was like i was shown here if you can do these pencil lines consistently okay and you've got the trigger to control that the airbrush is doing what you want um it's not a bad idea to look for a step up um the patriot or the sotar is definitely a step up um it has a different feel to it it's got a much more pencil like feel um the the nose is a, is a little closer to the trigger um it just has has overall a much different feel it's i think it's probably easier to get these these really thin lines right all right so you'll notice let me see, there we go. That as I'm spraying, I keep ending up with this. See that dot? Right? So what that is, is that's because I'm not doing something right and then I'm intentionally not doing it right, okay? What I'm not doing is, when you, when you airbrush, what you need to do is pull the trigger back, or push down, pull the trigger back, let me see if I can make this a little easier to see, actually. This is kind of rough to, where's my, let's try, eh, I don't like that. Okay. Eh, you still can't see the spray coming out. Okay. So what happens is, what you need to be doing is, that's a little too dark. Okay, so what you need to be doing, come on focus, there we go, nope. This is just not working well. Let's see if we can, yeah, there we go. Okay, so what you need to be doing is pushing down, pulling back, rolling forward, letting go, okay? But what a lot of people have the habit of doing is pushing down, pulling back, letting go. Pushing down, pulling back, letting go. What that means is that um, the paint hasn't finished blowing off the tip and paint accumulates at the tip, okay? So you end up with these little dots of, of, of paint. And what can happen is you'll be working on a really critical part of your your model. You'll be doing something where you're you're doing real fine detail work, okay? And all of a sudden you go, maybe you're working with a real dark color near a light color. You go to, or opposite, a light color near a dark color. That's especially when it's bad. Um, is you go to spray and it blows all that stuff off the tip and when it blows all that stuff off the tip you're kind of hosed because it just splatters all over the model it's especially bad with white um i will show an example of that later there's it's easier to show once we start doing a model which we're going to do in a moment so anyways the the big thing about this brush is that it has a much much smaller needle um the Patriot either comes with a 0.5 setup or a 0.3 setup um, uh, for the nozzle, and then Super Detail is the smallest, which matches the 0.3 um, nozzle. And this goes down to a 0.2. So, you know, it's 50% smaller than, than the Patriot, which means um, theoretically it's easier to get smaller lines. I'm not going to say you. you I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's probably a little easier to get smaller lines. What it also means is that it's much more picky about the paint. It's going to clog a lot easier. It's going to clog a lot faster on you. So um, when you're using Sotar, you really need to be thinning 
your paint um, quite a lot um, using inks which don't clog nearly as much um, and or um, you know consider um, you know maybe maybe not using it for for a lot of the the things that you would you know push your your skills on the Patriot um, you'd be surprised how much the Patriot can do for you there's a lot of people who pick up uh, um, a Sotar because they're frustrated that they just haven't learned enough I'm just cleaning this guy out a little bit I let that ink sit in there the other thing you want to do with the Sotar is you want to clean it often um, yeah unfortunately you can see I don't know if you can tell yeah so I left that in there and see how that's tainted that's that's tinted rather um, that's just means it got left in there just a little too long it's got a little bit of um, of the paint the the thing left on it we want to clean that off I don't think anybody is on or nobody's talking one of the two if you're on and you're watching say something if you're just super not interested that's fine too so the Patriot's a step, or the Sotar's a step up from the Patriot, um, but only if you've really mastered the Patriot. If you haven't mastered the Patriot and you get the Sotar, you're really probably just making your life more difficult because you're going to try running um, thicker paints through it, and, and that's going to make things much, much harder than it has to be. Okay, so... The next airbrush we're going to talk about is the newest one in the Badger line. And I'm just going to touch on this real briefly because it's super new. It is the Sidewinder. Okay. I don't even know if I'm going to hook it up. We'll see. So it's the Sidewinder. Okay. This is a side feet cup. So what it means is instead of the cup being right here and gravity taking it down, the cup is off to the side and it's kind of a bit of gravity but it's also um it needs siphon it, it needs the air rushing by um to some degree to actually pull the paint through it's not as bad as a bottom feed um but you, you're gonna have to run slightly higher pressures um which is not good in modeling because it um in modeling where we're using those hard surfaces and I'll, if you're running higher pressure it can be more difficult to to get exactly what you want um we'll talk a little bit about pressure later but for the most most of the time you're gonna want uh lower pressure right so just i'm gonna check one thing here real quick guys make sure that nobody is commenting anything here Alrighty, so do, 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 getting back. Um, honestly, this is not really a brush that there's any reason to pick over, like the um, Badger 105 or the the Sotar, the the Patriot or the the Sotar. I just I I can't come up with a reason why you would want to do this unless you really think you need to look down the barrel and see in which case you should just get the sotar because you're probably doing something super precise anyways and you should just get the sotar slim where it's got the little cutout anyways so i just can't come up with a good reason i thought maybe i could use this brush leave it comes with bottles that attach as a siphon so there's a bottle hanging off here right and then um, I could leave primer in there and just use this as a primer, but honestly, it just doesn't work that well. Um, this is just not a brush for that I think works well for us. It's more of a uh, fine art brush for people doing murals, um, people doing stuff like that, where they, they like the, the side feed for being able to see, and they need the bigger cup and stuff like that. So I just don't think this is the brush for um model hobby usage i'm not really even gonna gonna mess with it more than say you've really got better options out there okay so at this point um i've only talked about badger we're gonna move on to a different brand now let me see what have i talked about i've talked about that 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 we're gonna move on to um gsi which is a brand not many people probably know it's a brand out of japan it is basically um, 
built the same as a Awada, right? So this is uh, effectively an Awada clone, okay? They're built in the same factory to very similar specs. Sometimes you can even interchange parts from one to the other. This particular brush is um, a really very singular purpose brush. I'm not huge on singular purpose stuff, but this brush just does what it does so well that it's hard not to love it. And what it does exceedingly well is stuff like priming stuff. This is a brush that requires much higher pressure to operate. And um, because it's not just a trigger style brush, which is which is nice. I really enjoy the feel of a trigger style brush. If you can see there, it has three holes on the end. It's got one there, and then it's got two on each of these um, styles. What that does is it creates, instead of, um, see how it's narrow in that direction, okay? but then it's much wider in that direction. It creates a massive fan effect, okay? And what that means is that you can, you can do something like prime a model really fast and really, really evenly. You can really get a nice even prime on a model with very little effort, but it takes a lot of air pressure to do it. Um, and, but the, the thing is it works very well. The GSI, this is a GSI PS290. The thing about this brush is it feels like a very high-end brush. Like all the, it's got seals, it's got um, all the features, it's got needle stops, it's got everything. Um, it feels like a very well put together brush, okay? So if you look, and we wanna prime this guy, we can look, we're covering head to toe in one pass, right? Right, so if we want to do this, look how fast we can. And we're just getting nice, even coverage. All right, I didn't put very much paint in there. And then All right, I'm not really painting this model. I'm just using this as an example here, right? So look, we primed that model in just no time flat, okay? If we wanted to, we can go back and, and get all the nooks and crannies and stuff like that. We're not gonna worry about that right now um, for demonstration purposes. What we are gonna do though, is then we can take it and we can we can zenithal pro oh, that needs to be shaken, doesn't it? We're just gonna go a little zenithal prime over the top because we're gonna use for some of our next. And then we do this and we're just like bam 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 bam. And we're doing this at like a 45. You know, we can come in here, do it a little more. And there we go, look at that. Okay. So I don't prime black often. I do sometimes, but a lot of times I'll prime dark brown or whatever, because I think um, black is a pain in the butt to paint over things unless you're actually painting black. So it makes sense to start with something that's still dark and makes good shadows, but isn't necessarily black, unless you just have something with a ridiculous amount of nooks and crannies that you really do need black for. So, when, why would you want a brush like the PS290? Okay, the PS290, um, I believe in the States it's only sold by spraygunner.com, which is a fantastic website for, um, sorry, I'm, Rinsing out brush. Spray Gunner is a fantastic website for um, airbrush stuff. All airbrush stuff. Highly recommend using them. They're also stupid fast. They're as fast or faster than Amazon, especially these days. Um, if you do a lot of large models, if you're doing paid work where you need to you, 
time is money kind of thing, um, then this is a, an excellent brush to have. You can knock out armies quick. You can knock out, you know, if you're doing big tanks, um, this can cut a significant chunk of time off as well as make the finished product just a lot smoother because you do have just a really nice even coat. Um, if you're doing uh, scale models like planes, boats, anything like that, really popular with that crowd because they can do things so nice and evenly, right? So that's the GSI Creos PS290. So if we if we take some of it apart here, we can see this is a needle stop. What that does is um, it only allows the needle to go so far back. So it allows sh um, what happens is here, we'll put it back on and see. So several of the airbrushes tonight have this. So right now it allows the trigger to go all the way back. But if we do this, what this is doing is it's moving it internally and now it won't go all the way back. Okay. So what that means is if we want only a little spray every time, we can set it to allow only a little spray and every time it's going to do the exact same little spray. Okay. I really don't use trigger stops that often, um, but they can be helpful depending on what you're doing. Like every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? I need a little tiny spray, you know, a hundred times. We're just going to set it and I can just not even think about it and just tap, 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 tap. Not usually with this brush, but in trigger stops in general. Um, but then the problem is when you do need a big spray, now you got to go over here and crank it back and then try to get it back where it was. And, you know, so it's not super useful, but it is moderately useful. So PS290. Um, good brush if you need to do a lot of stuff quickly. Um, and one other thing, the way triggers work, the way trigger brushes work is that you pull back to start air and then you're going to hit a, a kind of point of resistance. So air is going right now and then paint starts. And then you let go and it travels back. And so what happens is it goes air, paint, paint, air which is great because what that means is since it always ends with air and you literally can't let go, you never get the little collection on the end of the tip, right? You never get tip splatter because you have bad form. You can just let go and you're not going to have to worry about it um, creating any kind of tip splatter. It's, it's honestly one of the biggest advantages of these kinds of brushes. All right, Grex TG3. Um, similar to the last brush we saw, it's a trigger brush, right? So this has a custom grip on it that I made out of, um, gosh, what's the stuff? It's hot water, moldable plastic stuff, right? So it just fits my hand like a glove, right? So um, the Grex is a super nice brush. It's full of um, what I what I feel like are features, right? So the cap on the end is magnetic. If you want to take it off to clean it, it's good. The nice thing is all of their needles, all of their nozzles, everything fits across all their brushes. So um, if you buy a Grex needle and it's a 0.3 needle, it's a Grex needle in whatever brush, which is not common um, in any other brand that I'm aware of. Um, you know, if you buy a, a Badger needle, you better make sure it matches up to the model you've got. If you buy um, a... Um, nozzle for an a water brush you need to make sure it matches up to the model that you need um so yeah it's it's really nice the trigger has a really nice action so it's the same thing pull back a little bit for air pull back more for paint um this is also a needle stop back here okay so the nice thing um this cap right back here if you're going to take it off to clean the tip if sometimes paint collects right here you might want to clean it this is magnetic back here so it stores back here and then you take it off um, a lot of people lose these <laughs> though um, it comes with a variety I think it comes with two or three different cup sizes right so you can stick that in there do that um, change the cup size um, the one thing that I don't like about this brush or the last brush is that the nozzles require a very special tool, a, a very special wrench to get out. 
like the nozzle on a um let's take it you'll see the difference here i don't think i want to take this one out because they're such a pain to deal with um but it requires a very special wrench to get that out whereas if you look at a patriot let's pull apart a patriot here Patriot has what's called a self-centering nozzle. I'm gonna back this needle off. Back this needle off too here. That needle sticking out is just asking for trouble. Oh, I got a little something. Yeah. I should give these a clean at some point, right? Um that was really sticky. Um so yeah, where am I? Okay, so a little tiny nozzle here that requires a tool, and it's threaded on the end. So what that means is it's really easy to accidentally cross thread, and then you basically ruined a nozzle, and you're gonna have to order a new one, and yada yada yada. Whereas um, this is a much larger nozzle. Look at this compared to this, right? much larger nozzle and it's called self-centering it just sits down in there and then when you screw everything back together it just automatically seats where it needs to to sit so that's a really nice feature on badger and a few other brushes um that, that we'll continue talking about um i don't love the brushes that require a tool um grex requires a tool and um the PSI, uh, the GSI series. So the last one and one we'll talk about here in a moment, they require a tool. So the Grex is a brush that I want to love more than I love. It's very ergonomic. It's super comfortable. Um, it takes some getting used to with the aim of it. Initially, you'll find that your aim doesn't appear to be true. Like that you, you, um, I'm just cleaning the, the needle here, guys. Um, that you'll aim one place and it goes slightly to one side. You just kind of, you need to spend more time with the brush and then it'll get a lot better. I'm just putting this back in, guys. Okay. Um, the problem that I have with this brush, we're going to put some paint in it. We're going to run some stuff through it is that more than any other brush that I have, this brush clogs faster than any other brush I've got. Um, even than little tiny ones. This has got a 0.3 setup in it, 0.3 millimeter setup. Okay, let me run a little water through here, make sure everything's good. You always wanna run water through your airbrushes when you start using them. Always throw, it's gonna get any dust out that might have accumulated in there. It's going to um, make sure that any kind of cleaner that you might have run through it flushes out. Always start by just throwing a little water in there. We're gonna take a little bit of, this is uh, just some burnt sienna ink. This is just what we're gonna be using for testing. And then, so it just clogs more than any other brush that I have. That's kind of the problem that I have with it. Um, you see, we can get we can get reasonably fine lines. They sell um, a point um, two millimeter needle, which is the same as like the. Um, the SOTAR setup. I find this is a brush where a lot of times I do make use of the limiter. What I'll do is I'll set it and then I can just tap and I can do a whole bunch. That's about the only thing that, not the only thing, that's one thing that I really find useful is it's really good for this kind of repeated, like if you want to glaze, a real thin glaze over everything, this is a great brush for that because what I'm doing is I'm just taking it and I'm just doing that, okay? And I don't ever have to worry about tip splatter like I do 
on a normal brush because of the air paint paint air when you pull back you get air paint when you let go it's paint air so on a normal one if you're not if you don't have good control on a normal brush we talked about this before if you don't have good control on a normal brush what happens is you push down you get air you pull back you get paint if you let go right there what happens is you um immediately stop the uh you you let paint collect on the the end because the the air doesn't blow it off okay with um a trigger style brush or the the handset that you'll see in a moment um that's not true what happens is you don't get tip splatter because it always begins and ends with air okay this is a brush that i probably have a little more trouble getting really 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 super fine lines compared to um the patriot which has got the same needle setup but you can see i'm getting reasonable lines right so it's not like you can't do you know this that line size is about the width of an eye okay so we can do some work if we wanted to take this guy and we wanted to add some shading you know we wanted to add some shading on here you can see it's going where I want. I've got plenty of control. I don't have to worry about splatter. It's super, super comfortable to use. Right? If you've got hand pain kind of issues, this is the brush for you. Okay? I would just say clean it out often. Um, one person I talked to who I'm not going to name names. Um, they said that the, they had the same problem with feeling like it clogged more often than other brushes because of this design of their um, nozzle, that it just wasn't as efficient of, of a design of nozzle. And based on my experience, uh, that, that might be true. Um, it's not a bad brush. It's not a bad brush. If you've got hand pain, if you um want to push the easy button on airbrushing this is a good one because it's just it, it really is hard to screw up compared to a lot of other brushes um and you can see i i was able to do the shading on that just really simple like it's just really easy you just need to clean it out often clean it out well um it is easy to clean um but you're gonna need to clean it out um this is not one that you want to let the paint sit in a moment longer than you have to if it sits in there longer you're going to be regretting i wonder if something's wrong with my comments or something like nobody's on really it's weird i don't think i've ever had one where i've had as many as much time where just nobody's on i guess it happens do, 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 do. I think a lot of people are going to catch it after. That's okay. I'm just cleaning this out real quick, guys, because like I said, we don't want to leave this. This is one I will probably go back afterwards and do a more serious cleaning on because it needs it. It tends to clog and just paint just stays in it longer. So, um, but it's a great brush if you've got hand paint or if you just want something really easy to use. Um, it is an expensive brush. It's not a cheap brush, um, but it's a lot of fun to use. It's, it's probably one of the easiest airbrushes, I think, to use. Um, we're going to move from one of the easiest airbrushes to one of the more difficult, but one of the more precise this is the GSI 770, or the, sorry, the, yeah, the, yeah, GS, yeah, GSI PS 770. So this is a super, super, super high precision airbrush. It's got a 0.15 needle in it, which is just 
retardedly tiny. Um, I, I think it's the smallest they make. Um, you do not want to run anything but really high quality inks or very high quality airbrush paint through it. It will clog on you. Don't be putting craft paint through this guy. Um, Createx Illustrator paint is great through it. Um, inks are great through it, but don't don't put Citadel um, normal paint or um, craft paint or something like that or army paint or don't 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 you're just asking for trouble. Um, this is uh, what's called a pack valve. It allows you to control some of the pressure here. Um, I don't usually use it because I've got one here that I just have for all my brushes. Same thing. Um, it's not technically a pressure valve. Um, yeah. Anyways, that um, it does have the needle stop like before. Um, this is just it just feels like a very high end brush, like the weight of it in your hand. The um, when you take it apart, um, it's just everything feels very finished. Whereas um, some of the brushes on the lower end of the spectrum just feel very, um, what's the word, industrial. So just everything about this brush just feels super smooth and whatever and, and very put together. So this is needle, um, this trigger tension adjustment. If you want a softer trigger, you can back that off want a tighter trigger it's just compressing that spring more okay so if you want a real soft trigger just pull that back um it, unfortunately like all the gsi brushes that i'm aware of it does require a tool to remove the nozzle and the nozzle is ridiculously tiny this is basically the clone of an awada custom micro of the same um size and everything very very close to it um it's just it's it's a beautiful brush um it's not one i've used a ton i've used it some so let's put some ink in it this is if you really want to do micro detailing work with an airbrush this is a great one to pick up um i would only only use super super high quality paint with it though um All right, so you can see it's just really easy for me to get really fine lines, right? So it's super, super easy. You know, if all, if all I wanted to do was shade his, um, you know, just, I think of something here. You know, just this one bit of ankle down here, you know, look, easy enough. I can hit that one ankle and not have to worry about overspray at all. Look at that. Okay. Um, you can hit single, this one little, look, that one little bump there, that's it. Okay. You can do eyes. So here's... Here's what we'll, I don't want to run it through this brush. Um, I was going to say, we'll paint the eyes white and we'll do, we'll do eye. No, I don't want to, I don't want, want to, I, I could go get my Createx paints, but I don't have them out right now. Um, not a cheap brush, 300-ish, something like that. Um, the advantage is it's just a super high quality brush, especially if you think you might also do some fine art painting later. It's just a really nice brush um to keep on hand highly recommend it um but it's kind of a one trick pony like you're not going to be doing anything with it except really really detailed um high end work with it um so if if you feel like that's the level that you're at and you really want to kick things up a notch where you feel like you need just the creme de la creme of detail brushes this is definitely a contender for that um it's probably my straight up favorite for just detail like if all i wanted was detail it would probably be this one sorry i'm looking for something to clean this out real quick 
to do. <laughs> so, but like I said, not a particularly cheap brush and very, very much a one trick pony. It's as Alton Brown would say, it's a unitasker. It's, it's your detail brush and that's about it. It's not a bad thing, but um, very high end feeling brush. Really like it. Um, it's it's usually within reach if if I feel like I need just super ultimate precision. But you do need to have good um, technique. It will splatter on you, like I said. You this is not a brush you want to and let go. You do need to have good technique. Um, I also miss the tall trigger on the badger. I like having a tall trigger. Um, I may add something to the height of the trigger just to increase the trigger um, distance. It's a super accurate brush, super high-end feeling, like just has a really, really nice feel to it. Um, available through SprayGunner.com. Again, uh, they carry the GSI line of products, which are um, more popular in Japan, I believe. That's where they're made. Um, not as popular over here, but not for any reason other than they just haven't been available. Um, they're super, super nice products. Really, really happy with the GSI brushes that I have. Um, we've got two left, I think. Um, I showed this brush earlier. This is the Hansa 281. This is, a, this is, this is kind of a strange brush. Um, I really, really like it though. It might be, might be my favorite brush. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's between this brush and the next brush for, for my favorite brush because this brush, um, it's a detail brush. Um, but it's, it's got a few things going for it that I really like. It's got the, the needle guard, which or the needle, needle stop, which sometimes I use, but not a lot. Um, it's got a self-centering toolless um self-centering toolless nozzle, right? So you don't need a tool to get it out. Hansa is made by um H and S, or uh, yeah, Harder and Steenbeck, which is actually made by Infinity now. They got bought a while back. Um but they're not manufactured in the same place. Um, uh, they're both, these are manufactured in German and they have that like high quality, like German engineering feel to them where they just, they're just, just gorgeous brushes. Um, again, everything on this brush feels super high quality. You can adjust the trigger tension here. Um, you can do everything. What's really special about this brush is it's the same you don't push down. There's no push. Like I can't push down. It it's not a single action. It's double action. So single action means you get air and paint at the same time. It's double action means you get air and then paint. So what happens is you pull back a little up here, you get paint, or you get air. You pull back more, you get paint. So it's like the trigger style was earlier, and that it always begins and ends with air. So it makes it a lot less likely. For you to have like a critical um, splatter um, on your model because your your technique was off and it allows you to go a little faster because you don't have to worry about things like that so you know all right this is a detail brush so we can do these really we can do really fine lines with it all right. Oh, let's grab another piece of paper. We can definitely um Ah, where's that? We can definitely hit anything on the model that we want to as far as precision goes. Um it is a point two. So it's like the same as a Sotar. I would say the only thing that I don't like about the brush is that it does take some getting used to to figure out exactly where your level of control is. This is a brush that I do find myself using the needle stop for sometime because I'm like, I just want a really, I want a really repeatable 
line and I can go, I can just do super fast things on, I can just be here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and here, and here, and I never have to worry about it splattering on me, I never have to, if, if you don't worry about splatter, it's because you either have just impeccable airbrush um, technique or because you haven't done much airbrushing. <laughs> um, but if you don't, kudos. Um, but you can see it's just, it's it really repeatable, really, really clean lines, right? So if I want, I can do something really thin. Oh, there we go. Ah. So like I said, the the only thing is knowing exactly, you know, if you want to shade with it, you can. Probably not geared towards that, but you can. It's a detail brush. So this is the Hansa 281. Um, it sits between the price of some of the others, but it's just it's a great little brush that if I'm if I'm in a critical point in a spot in a in a project where I need a super reliable brush, this is probably the one I'm reaching for because I know there's no risk that I'm gonna mess anything up. I can do exactly what I need to. Um, the only thing I don't like is this little guard here collects the crap out of stuff. That's about the only thing that I don't like and it makes it impossible because of all their little air holes to do any kind of um, back wash on it, which, yeah. So that's about the only thing I don't like about that one. So just a second, I'm about done cleaning this guy out. Then we're gonna move on to our last one. Our last one, in case you haven't guessed, is the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. This is not the super blinged out chrome model. Um, this is just their normal nickel coated. The only difference really is the coating and I think one seal. Um, I just didn't feel like it was worth the extra money for um, the seals and coatings and stuff like that. Um, so that's this brush. If anybody ever tells you that um, cleaning is hard, like, just look at how long it's taken me to, to, to do all this stuff. Like, I have not had spent a lot of time on cleaning anything. Like, nothing. It's not been difficult at all. Um, so let's talk about this brush. This brush is like the, the Rolls Royce of brushes. It's got all the features. It's got things that you never even thought you wanted. Um, it feels just like a highly crafted precision instrument, and that's what it is. Um, this is the the love child of, of of a few engineers who are just really trying to push um, push airbrushing engineering forward. Um, so let's talk about a few features. We'll we'll throw some paint down and we'll see how it looks. So it's got um, this removable cap on the end, right? So if you want to, you can take that on and off. That just helps protect the needle right there, right? Um, it does have a uh, needle stop, right? So you can dial that in, you can dial that out. But, but the big problem with needle stops, remember, is that if you want to undo them, you have to dial it all the way back and then try to get it back in. This has a really neat, it's almost like a ballpoint pen. You can lock it into one place and now the needle won't go all the way back right and then if you want to pull it out you just pull it and now it goes all the way back and then you press it in and now it's back to where it was so i don't know it's it's a pretty useful feature um it's not like amazing but it's pretty useful so you can do this you got your uh trigger pressure adjustment right so if you like a looser trigger you can crank this way down and you get a real nice loose trigger if you like a stiffer trigger you know compress the spring out compress the heck out of that spring a little more and you'll get a little stiffer trigger right the nice thing that i really like about their needles and their nozzles is this has um you can see it's got like three little ridges right there four three four ridges and their nozzle 
has matching ridges on it, right? So if you look at their nozzle, if we can catch it in just the right light, there we go. It's got matching ridges. So, you know, this needle goes with that nozzle. That's huge. Like, I don't know any other company that does that. And so constantly you have to like be making sure that um, you match them, them correctly, right? Okay. So, yep. The air pressure here is a little different. You actually have a certain amount of adjustment, which is unlike almost any other brush. Um, you can do a little, you can do a lot. It's not a huge amount of, you know, you can't do a lot of intermediate steps, but it is nice to have a little bit of control. Um, your, um, your badger brushes are on off. Like you don't have control there. Um, you don't necessarily need it, um, but it's nice to have. Um, the, like the Hansa brush that we saw, the, the, Nozzle here does have an actual seal on the nozzle. Um, of all the brushes I have, my um, my Harder and Steenbeck and my Hansa, because they're made by the same company, are the only that have actual straight up seals on the nozzle. And it's just, you know, what it means is more air is going to where you want it, which means you're going to be able to work at a lower PSI, which ultimately doesn't mean a ton other than just you know less stress on your air compressor stuff like that more more life on on your parts because things fit better things things go together better stuff like that um the trigger action on the infinity is just butter smooth i mean it's just it's got it's got just a really nice feeling trigger i do wish it was slightly taller but i feel like it's a little taller it might not be let me see is it a little taller than this yeah it's just slightly taller than the um the gsi creos the the 770 which means um you get just a little bit more control the biggest thing about this brush and about the um, hardened steam bit brushes is they've come out with what they call a uh, a version two needle and what it means is the the needle itself has a secondary bevel on the tip so it has one angle on the tip where it's going like this and then the very tip is at an even sharper angle and they say it allows a lot more control um over the the paint in the brush and it certainly seems to it produces a really really tight um line they're one of the only ones to to offer the 0.4 millimeter size needle and that that's kind of the standard um this brush also takes a 1.5 which is the same as the um 770 that we saw earlier the gsi 770 which means um this brush really um, can be a general purpose or a super high detail brush. Why is that spinning? My brush is spinning for some reason. This is my newest brush. This is probably the one I'm most getting used to. I'm not sure exactly why it's spinning. There we go. Okay. All right. So... A little bit of ink in here. Let's do some lines. This is with the 0.4 millimeter. So this is bigger than I think anything we've seen so far, except for the PS um, 290, which was this big guy with the broad coverage. So this is going to be our second biggest needle nozzle setup. But you'll see we can still get super fine lines on it. So look at that, we get really nice, I mean, probably the finest lines that we've gotten. Really tight, focused, I mean, beautiful. I mean, compared to some of these others, it's just, I mean, it's night and day difference. And this is with the 0.4 setup. You know, 
you throw the the point one nine in here so this is what we're getting with the infinity i think this was i don't know maybe the grex yeah probably the grex you know there's a pretty big difference between this and this and this and this so you really have a just a massive amount of control with the infinity airbrush but you know it's a pricey airbrush it's going to cost you right so but you know if you really are looking to up your airbrush game it's a great way to do it so let's try throwing some paint let's try doing something fun on our um guy and the reason that we get such tight lines there is that secondary bevel on the the airbrush needle that's what they say at least and it, it certainly seems to it's the version two needles and um it certainly seems to make a difference um because you can see we've got a larger needle larger nozzle and we're getting tighter patterns which is phenomenal it means that you know whereas before i was like let's do this thing with the um with uh the ps770 which is which is this real high fine detail brush and i said but you know i don't want to worry about um putting thick paint in here because it's going to clog up that that point one five you know that's definitely something you have to worry about but with this brush we don't really have to worry about it we're sitting there at um at a at a much 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 higher um, nozzle size so we don't have to worry about that which is amazing so we're going to throw some bold titanium white in here and what we're going to do is we're going to airbrush his eyes a little bit on this figure and we're going to make them glow we're going to just do we're going to show that you can do you know not you know huge eyes with an airbrush if you've got a decent airbrush right so i'm going to throw some white in there we threw a little bit of um of thinner in there we're probably about one to one airbrush thinner to paint right now and then we're just going to make sure this is nice and good and mixed up And then we're going to see what we can do here. When you want to do glowing eyes on something. Um, what you want to do is you want the, you're going to want to use sorry, there we go. You're going to want to use some fluorescent paint. I think my air pressure's... Yeah, that's the problem. My air pressure's a little high. I was like, something is just not feeling right. Just a second. I'm trying to get this dialed in. is much thinner than I expected it to be. There we go. I'm feeling good about this. All right. So what we want to do is we want to get our, our eye socket nice and and white, especially the middle of the socket. Right? Okay. So we got really nice bright sockets there. And then, ah, I just spilled white paint everywhere, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. Just gonna clean this out real quick. I don't want this white. Is, white is the worst color to airbrush, guys. Like 
You have no idea. It's just such a pain. So I'm not gonna leave that white in there because if that white were to dry and, and clog, I would I'd be I'd cry. Um so now what we want though is we need to see kind of the outline of his eye eye sockets. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of wash, I think. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that settle in around the the this is just some black wash. I've got this is soft body black. Oh, you know what's better? I don't really like this wash. I, and I'm out of um I'm out of Citadel, which is probably the best wash. So we're gonna take a little bit of that. This is Army Painter Dark Tone. This is better stuff. And we're just gonna let we're gonna let this see what it did there? It gave my socket some definition. So see, now I actually have instead of um instead of just a white um what's the word even thing now I have eye sockets versus everything else. So yep. Let that dry for a moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come back in um, with our white on the brush real quick. And we're just gonna make sure that the center of his eye is super bright. Cause that's what we really need to be the brightest point. And we're just making sure that Ah, I destroyed all my wash there. It's because I'm being impatient, guys. You should learn from me to not be impatient. I'm, I just made this whole thing much harder than it had to be. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to push this back in there. What you don't want to do, be impatient like Chris. Let your wash dry. And then what we're going to do in a moment with this airbrush, because we've got such nice controls, we're just going to hit it with teeny tiny shots of uh, fluorescent paint. And going over this white is going to make it really look like these eyes glow right okay somebody stop me i keep messing with things in ways i shouldn't somebody say chris stop doing that okay we're going to let that dry, hopefully. There is not a soul talking. Something must be wrong. I don't think I've ever had a single stream where nobody said anything. Do, 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 do. People just are like, do that. I don't care about airbrushes. What? Airbrushes, huh? What if it's not, maybe it's not streaming? Is it not streaming? That would be strange. I thought I checked. Why don't I go check again? I did this whole thing and it didn't record and nobody saw it. I'm just going to cry. <laughs> does it show that I am streaming? It does. All right. All right. So I think we're probably probably about where I want to be here. We're going to take, we're going to clean up.
because I had a wash mishap here. All right. So we just want to make sure we've got nice. Do, let me see where I'm at here. <laughs> let me try moving this where you guys can see it a little more. There we go. Okay. Right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take, we're just going to right in the middle there. Okay. So now what we've got is we've got a really bright middle. We've got kind of that dark edge around the outside of his eyes and then kind of a faded white underneath his eyes. So what that means is when we hit this fluorescent over it, it's just going to be like kablam, kablam. And it'll look fantastic. What we're doing now is we're just getting this airbrush ready. Um, got a couple of options for fluorescence. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's the Createx um, fluorescence. You can get about Hobby Lobby. Um, Golden makes a really nice fluorescent. Most of the Hobby fluorescents I actually don't care for that much. Um, Vallejo. Um, OS scale 75. I don't know. I feel like none of them really do fluorescence that well. Um, so we're going to throw a little bit of the Createx in here. I'm going to make sure that I am at... Oh, see, that would have been bad, huh? Oh, you should never, 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 never um, test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set... I'm going to use a needle stop here. So that I make sure that I'm only doing little tiny blasts here. And then what we're going to... Oops, that is not dry, but we're going to go with it anyways, people. All right, let me see if I can do this. We're just going to build it up real slow. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're starting to get... All right. All right. We don't want to go too fast here. All right, so at this point, that's probably about where we wanna be for it. And then you wanna take your brush and just add one little final dot of white. Cause it'll really help sell the glow. If there's just one, one really actual white in it. This needs to be real small. And then that's basically how we do glowing eyes with the airbrush. Is we do white, then we use a wash, then we use white, then we airbrush, and then we white. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. I'd ask questions, but I don't think anybody is on to ask questions. So I am going to wrap it up here, and that will be everything. Au revoir. Good night. Juice.